Hey guys, Dave Andrade here. Today what we're going to look at is some warp stabilization techniques within Premiere Pro. In this case, it's CC 2015. So I've seen a lot of things posted recently, a lot of new software that's coming out that claims to do a lot of the work for you. And I know there's a lot to it where there's a lot of algorithms that are made and it looks very tempting. However, a lot of the stuff that can be done can be done to a certain extent within Premiere Pro. So what I'm saying is I feel that sometimes people give up on this particular software because I've noticed that sometimes, at least on certain videos and in certain forums, that people will just take the warp stabilizer effect and go ahead and apply it and not make any adjustments. Then in turn, they'll realize that it's not ideal. You know, they'll almost feel as if the uh, effect failed them when in essence it's a really robust effect so let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about here we have this footage right here it was from a wedding that I shot now let's go ahead and take a look and this is what I was referring to we have the warp stabilizer effect and everything you see here is the default uh, but again we have all these options right here it defaults to subspace warp. Now there's very rare occasions that you'll actually want to use the subspace option. What it will do is actually, as it indicates, it will warp the edges of the frame just to keep everything basically in perspective and stabilized. But you also have things such as position, position, scale, and rotation, everything that you see right there. In addition to everything that you see here, you also have this advanced option. But anyway, as I indicated, let's go ahead and take a look at this footage. This is from a wedding I shot, and you can see it's a little bit shaky. Now, the reason I'm showing you this particular footage is because it pans. It pans over to the right, and then it, it goes up. Now, by trying to stabilize this as is, the problem is it tries to analyze the whole scene. And in doing so, it really has to crop in just to get the image stabilized in a satisfactory manner. It has to really crop in. So there's ways to go about it. So my point in showing you this is, let's go ahead and activate this effect. And you can see the difference there. There's the actual footage and it crops in. So using the effect by itself gets us to a scale of 110. And the reason it does that is because it wants to cut out, it has to move this footage around and it has to cut out the black bars that would be there basically. So by moving the footage around, and I'll show you that right now, let me go ahead and come up here. We'll go to motion, I'll adjust the Y axis. And that's exactly what you'd be seeing. However, because it scaled it, it, you won't be able to see that. So it had to move it up to 110% in order that we don't see this black bar. Moving forward, what I did was changed it from subspace warp to perspective. Same thing, stabilized crop auto scale. I went and chose detailed analysis. That only was marginally better. As you can see, now we're at 108.9, which is I believe only, the other one was exactly 110. 110.2, so just about 1% better. So changing it to uh, perspective and adjusting the scale really didn't do much for us, but that's with this particular footage. Normally, if you have a static shot, well, obviously it would be shaky, which is why you're trying to stabilize it. But normally with the shot focused in one direction, same visual perspective, you'll have more success with this. What you'll have to do is split the clip up. Now, if you look down here, these two is ac are actually the same clip, and I'll show you that in one moment, but even though this is not a bad amount, I would say anything under 120% is pretty decent. 110% is even better. So we're right in the right amount, but if you watch this, you can see how the result really isn't working for us. So far, so good.
but then that happens. You can see how it bounces in and out, which is not ideal. So what I had to do, we bring up this clip and right when it transitions from left to right to uh, basically up and down, that's where I made the cut. So now if we go ahead and take a look at these, 102.8 on for the auto scale, I changed it to perspective. And generally, and not necessarily, but generally the less that you're attempting to stabilize, the better off you'll be. As we saw here, you're trying to stabilize the whole clip, plus the clip has a lot of movement in it. In this case, we're only going left to right and that's all it's going to analyze. So now it treats this as a separate clip. So let's take a look at this. And this one was only 103%. So the point of this video is basically when you're changing perspective, let's say you have a handheld camera. If you're taking it and you're panning around, you're standing in one spot and you happen to turn in a circle, don't necessarily try to stabilize that footage as is. You'll have to determine when there's a significant change in direction and then cut it at that point. Because again, if you leave it as is, the computer's going to try to analyze all that motion and it will really have to crop in just to get something that makes sense. Now with this particular footage, I'll go ahead and play through it for you. You can see where it's down on the ground He's pedaling along on the uh, skateboard and then he pans up and then holds the camera to the right. Now this is footage from blendtoots.com. I'll go ahead and put a link to the uh, website and the YouTube channel below. But basically what I did in this case is I didn't bother to stabilize this because it's very organic. I mean, he's on the skateboard and he's just kind of pedaling along, but right here, that's when he starts to even out and now it goes from looking up to sort of panning across. So the question now is how do we do this? Because as you saw with the other footage, it was 102 percent, 102 point something percent and the other one was 103. Now that transition is going to be obvious, especially if those amounts don't come out next to each other. You'll see where there's an immediate cut to the other footage because it will try to crop in or maybe crop out if the other one was more severe at the cut. And I'll show you right now how we're going to go ahead and, and do that. So we'll take this footage. Like I said, I cut it at that particular point. And even with this, you can see where it jumps a little right at that moment. Of course, what you're also seeing is the pan up to the actual smooth motion. So that might be a little jarring, but there's also a little bit of a skip in there where it has to transition from one to the other. So in order to do this effectively, what you have to do, I'm going to take this portion of it. Let's come in here and bring it really close. I'll bring this over. So that way we can see frame by frame. And I'm going to slide this over one frame over the other footage. I'm going to come over here. We'll make sure that this one is selected. We'll come up to opacity, change this to 50%. And now we can see how off this footage is. Now I've already adjusted this to a certain degree. So as you can see, it's pr relatively close. But now if you look up here, the position amounts aren't normally what they are. What they actually are, are 960, And 540. So now you can really determine how far off these are. Uh, luckily for this particular footage, we have those lines on the uh, the basketball court here. So let's go ahead and do the adjustment basically that I had already done. So we're going to use the X left and right option here. Let's slide this over. And then the same thing here. We're going to move it up and down on the Y axis. Now I'm looking at the trees here. Now that's as far as I had adjusted it before. What I think I want to do in this case is actually 
because I feel as if those would almost be more of a focal point than the actual basketball court. But we can sort of play between the two because it will only be that one frame. And that's relatively close. Let's see if we can mess with the scale just a little bit, 110%. See if that does us any favors. Maybe slide the uh, X over a little bit more. Okay, and that's somewhat of a happy compromise. Uh, you have a little bit of a discrepancy there, there, and the trees obviously don't look perfect, but we've got it relatively close. So let's go ahead and come back here. I'm gonna slide this back. All right, and we're gonna change this back to, well, actually what we'll do is just delete this keyframe. All right, now we're back to normal. And you can see how smooth that transition is now. So I hope that helped. Uh, the best way to tackle footage like this, like I said, is to split it into two different clips. You want basically where the transition happens. If it's going left to right and then up and down, you wanna cut it at that point or any direction change. And then what you'll do is overlap the clips you'll probably only need one frame to go ahead and line it up. It may not line up perfectly. You may have to mess with the scale a little bit too. But once you have everything lined up, then you'll be able to make that transition a lot smoother. Again, you might have to make some compromises where the footage won't line up exactly, but you should be able to get it relatively close because essentially all the warp stabilizer is doing, unless you're using something like the subspace warp, is scaling it scaling the footage up. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. If you have any examples of when you've done this, I'd love to see them and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.